in just a few days Joan of Arc is going to be on the Wheel of Fortune here in Rise of Kingdoms so everybody's asking is she a must-have commander do you need to expertise Joan of Arc so today that's what we're going to answer and this is especially important if you already have William and I think the answer might surprise you so make sure you stay tuned if you enjoy Rise of Kingdoms content like this make sure you drop a thumbs up on it real quick subscribe to the channel we're getting so close to 40,000 and of course you can always unsubscribe later with that being said let's jump right into the video now my initial thoughts on Joan of Arc if you watched that video was that she was a little bit underwhelming right when we first took a look at somebody like Nevsky for example he was such an obvious no-brainer he was such an obvious cut above the rest of the commanders in rise of kingdoms in part because he has so many stats he has 20 percent of attack he has 20 percent of health he has 20 percent of defense and a massive single target uh, nuke here as well as the huge defense reduction he was just so obviously good and since Nevsky came into the game we've seen CPO we've seen Boudicca we've seen commanders come into the game that are uh, you know obviously very powerful and sort of no-brainers from an investment perspective so when we got word that Joan of Arc was going to come into the game we sort of expected her to be on the same level as Boudicca and on the same level as CPO and whether or not she is or not is going to depend on actual real world World testing which of course we don't have at the time of recording this I know that there are some people on YouTube who have you know simulated a Joan of Arc uh, with the battle formula from Rise of Kingdoms and I don't know exactly how much I would trust that data because there's a lot of things going on in the back end especially here with the fourth skill that does proc and the duration of this will be influenced on whether or not she's primary or secondary and just to be clear it doesn't matter if she's primary or secondary this skill will work it's just there's a little bit of overlap in the timing if she is the secondary and so to Today, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an overview as to what I'm thinking about Joan now that I've had a few days to really look at her skills and understand what she is doing now really quick if you're a well then obviously Joan of Arc is a commander you definitely want to have she is mainly going to be an open field monster okay absolute disgusting how good she is going to be in the open field I think she's very similar to William and she excels in some ways even better than he does but she also falls short uh, in a couple of ways compared to William and again we're going to talk a lot about William in this video so make sure you stay tuned for that but of course if you're a well or even a mid spender or somebody who is going all in on calves I think Joan of Arc is a no-brainer okay she is she's exceptionally good if you look at these skills you will not regret investing in Joan of Arc is she a little bit squishy yes is she more squishy than William it's actually kind of hard to say because the health here is really good we'll get into that in a little bit but the real question is if you're a free to play player right should you be investing in Joan of Arc is she on the same caliber as commanders like CPO and Nevsky and maybe even Boudicca honestly I don't know and if you have William I think you run into a little bit of a conflict of interest here right because if you're a free to play player then what you're looking to do especially if you are not a cavalry main is you know you may have one cavalry march in the open field right and at this point it's going to be Nevsky with somebody if it's you know Attila primary Nevsky secondary great if it's Nevsky with William I would say probably even better for free to play players uh, you could also do Nevsky with Saladin or even Mehmed for example I mean those are all realistic pairs that you could try but at the end of the day I think Nevsky belongs in your one cavalry march so then the question is you know if you're a free to play player and let's say you already have Nevsky do you have William that's that's the next question that comes to mind right because if you look at what William does compared to what Joan of Arc does I think they do very similar things they add AoE to Nevsky's kit which he has which he's desperately missing they're both giving you cavalry attack now William of course is giving you a little bit more and William actually does have a little bit of defense for three seconds here on the fourth skill however this is dependent on actually hitting a target with the active skill so for example if you're you know if you're just fighting the open field and you haven't had a skill shot from William yet you're not going to get this increase in defense and again it's only for three seconds solid buff but it's not up all the time whereas Joan of Arc does actually have 10 percent of Cavalry health that she gets 
all the time as long as she's on the map so I would say that is definitely better but again William has 40 percent of cavalry attack and 50 percent if he's expertise which I think a lot of you maybe don't have expertise William you can correct me in the comment section below but I think a lot of people who have William especially free to play have him as five 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 one that's what I have as well and I think that's a very good stopping point uh, and it's worth noting that Joan of Arc does not have that luxury right if you invest in her you have to expertise because this last skill you definitely want this at four uh you need or I'm sorry at five uh because the problem ability being 100 is just so good it's instant value every time it pops off it's so so good and of course you want the most amount of cavalry health like absolutely you want to maximize this so you really have to expertise Joan whereas William you, you don't have to and on top of that you know we have to take a look at the rage regeneration right because Joan of Arc does give you 60 rage and she gives it to two other armies as well it says this commander's troop and two surrounding friendly units so 60 rage times three units is great William on the other hand uh he if he hits multiple targets with his active skill which is conditional then he will give 150 rage to himself and this doesn't specify how many uh, allies can get this I think the cap is five so this actually is going to in general give way more rage to your allies and you know realistically for you it's 150 rage compared to 60 with Joan so realistically William is better at regenerating your rage and the rage of your allies however again this is conditional he has to hit at least two targets and if you're fighting in a murder ball that's pretty much guaranteed even with the weird shape of William I think in general you're going to hit two targets pretty often with his active skill in a mur murder ball um, but it is worth noting that for Joan of Arc uh, she just has to pop her active skill so whether she hits anyone one target two targets doesn't matter uh she's going to be regenerating uh your rage and on top of that she has her fourth skill where when this is at five it is guaranteed that you will pop her second skill again which brings her total up to 120 rage that she will be regenerating now this does have a 10 second cooldown which I think is definitely a big downside for Joan because you know with a fast skill cycle there's going to be a lot of instances where you miss the timing here and you know this is you're going to have a very fast skill cycle with Joan of Arc absolutely whether she's primary or secondary to Nevsky who has the skill tree her fourth skill triggering the active skill is going to trigger the talent in the skill tree here called rejuvenate so what this says is you gain 60 rage when a skill is used so let's say you have a Nevsky primary Joan secondary Nevsky pops his active skill you get 60 60 rage turn of downtime Joan pops her active skill you get another 60 rage turn of downtime and then her fourth skill is triggered assuming it's not on cooldown and she pops her active skill again which gives you another 60 rage so the rage engine for yourself at least for Joan is going to be absolutely ridiculous and honestly probably the same as William if not better despite William giving you more rage when you hit multiple targets and it gets even crazier if Joan of Arc is the primary because the support tree gives you 150 rage every single time an active skill is used which means Joan pops her active skill you get 150 secondary pops her active skill you get another 150 then her active skill pops again so you get 450 rage just from rejuvenate alone for that one skill cycle which is ridiculous on top of the rage you're going to be regenerating just from being in normal encounter attacks so realistically by the time those three skill shots go off you're going to be at least halfway through your rage bar already instantly which is absolutely insane so again the rage engine on Joan is going to be wild but the other thing we have to consider is how much damage is she really doing here right because of course her active skill not only has a better AoE shape than William and of course we don't know the shape in entirely because she's not in the game yet uh, but assuming it's not the shape of Mehmed then she will have probably just your standard cone shape that's my assumption even better if it's somebody like Ethel Flood but I, I don't think that will be the case I think it'll probably be the standard cone and again if that is the case she has a better shaped AoE than William meaning she will more more likely hit targets that are maybe in the peripheral and on top of that she deals more damage factor like straight up she deals 33 percent more skill damage with her active skill and she's gonna fire it off more times with this fourth skill so realistically even though William has way more cavalry attack and even you know 20 percent cavalry defense with that three second cooldown um on the fourth skill here if he hits multiple targets or even if he just hits one he still gets that 20 percent it's only three seconds regardless her active skill deals way more damage and you're going to fire it off more often with a better range engine and I think the other thing that makes Joan of Arc look underwhelming on the surface but when you break it down is actually pretty good is where is her damage being 
coming from right because again William has straight up more attack stats for cavalry so you would think that he's just going to deal more damage in general and that might be true and we'll have to wait and see but we have to take a look at where there's some bonus damage hidden in pretty much every skill here for Joan of Arc so for example not only is she dealing a massive AoE here she's also regenerating rage which we've talked about but she gives you and two other units five percent all damage this is all damage this, this doesn't specify cab damage or whatever and especially because it affects other units nearby this is five percent all damage and that is not something that William has right so whereas William might excel in the rage regeneration aspect for your allies uh, and he does have more cavalry stats here you're giving all damage to nearby allies which is incredibly good and again this is going to pop twice if you don't have it on cooldown so very solid stuff there if she's primary it's six seconds of five percent all damage for you and your allies which is very nice uh, love to see that buff on top of that her second skill gives you five percent normal attack damage outside of territory which is very good her third skill gives you five percent cav damage which if what we understand about this is true and i think i heard about this in a legend roni video where he talked about Boudica and gilgamesh cav damage here is only going to affect normal attack and counter attack damage this this uh from what we know does not affect skill damage right so realistically you can look at this as um Joan of Arc assuming she's all cavalry which she will be you'll get five percent more normal attack damage and five percent more counter attack damage that's my understanding of this again comment down below if I'm wrong about this but that brings our total normal attack damage total up to 10 percent right so she gets 10 percent more normal attack damage five percent more counter attack damage but on top of that her expertise gives her five percent more counter attack damage so now we're looking at 10 percent counter attack damage as well total and she also has a 10 percent chance of instantly getting a 30 percent increase in normal attack damage for one second with a five second cooldown so really that part of the skill is not great but it's also not nothing right especially because it's 30 percent that's a solid buff to normal attack damage which we love to see but it doesn't end there because on the expertise again we see five percent more all damage if the target is above 30 percent units remaining which guys most of the time that will be the case it's very rare that people keep their units in the open field when they're at 30 percent or below unless they're caught or they don't know what they're doing uh so most of the time you're going to get that five percent more damage now if we compare this to William for example and I, I know I'm comparing them a lot and I think that's because these commanders are very very similar um if you look at William he gets 10 percent flat all damage bonus if he's outside of Alliance territory so with Joan of Arc there's a lot of conditions around these various little uh bonuses bonuses to damage that are sprinkled across all of her different skills here but in general she's going to get 10 percent all damage which is a comp combination of her active skill and her expertise assuming that they're above 30. now of course this does have a cooldown and a timer so realistically it's probably more like seven or eight percent all damage right which is still very very solid five percent of that is also shared she also gets about 10% more normal attack damage plus the random 30% one second proc I'm not even going to calculate that let's just call that an extra 3% she gets 10% more counter attack damage as well plus the 20% attack and the 10% of health William on the other hand if he's expertise gives you 50% of attack 20% of defense on a three second uh timer with a cooldown basically cooldown being his active skill shot and 10% all damage if he actually is outside of Alliance territory so if he isn't then that just you just don't get that bonus now it's also worth noting that William does prevent the enemy troops extra skill damage buff from taking effect and slows them down which makes it easier to swarm them so there's more stuff that William is doing that's not exactly you know lines up perfectly with Joan but again I think if we look at both of these after adding up everything it's really hard to say which one is better without testing for Joan but I think that Joan overall is going to be very very solid I think she's going to be very very solid and I think that looking at her at first glance and uh you know just writing it off is not really a great strategy because again on top of all that even though she has less stats her active skill damage is just so high and she's going to be dealing it more often with a great rage engine okay so with all that out of the way let's open up the tier maker here because I think that this is going to help you guys understand whether or not she is worth investing in if you already have William right uh, or if you're comparing and thinking should I get William or should I get Joan right a lot of people entering season of conquest are going to be as asking that question um and you know they want to know is William sort of power crept out of the game at this point and I think what we understand so far if you've been following that entire breakdown I just did uh is they're very similar and it's going to be hard to say exactly but 
if you already have William this will be really interesting so here we have all the legendary cavalry commanders and I think that right now Cavs are in the best spot they've ever been in right because of course we have Attila Takeda that's just tried and true classic gives you a ton of extra kills and it's it's a very exceptional March that you get access to and it's just it's it's just a match made in heaven basically of course we do have Yadviga and Jen Ziska which this I think Jen will be primary here uh this is going to be a very interesting garrison to see I think both these commanders you only want to invest in if you are garrison captain right if you have uh, if you're max in crystal tech this is going to be exceptionally good for a cab garrison but otherwise really not something you're going to be interested in now of course we already talked about Nevsky right now we're talking about William who's exceptionally good Saladin is still a commander that a lot of players are using especially with William right like this is kind of like the original budget build for cavalry that you know performed really really well and now uh we have Joan of Arc in the mix okay um I know a lot of people love XY and if you have him that's great I think free-to-play players probably should not invest in XY at this point um he is very glass cannon yes the damage is through the roof but uh he is easily swarmed down and I just feel like for free-to-play players that's gonna be difficult it's kind of like a better version of Khan but again you need that you you really need the equipment to be so good here I don't know if you have him already he's exceptionally good but I just think right now I think the two pairs we're looking at right now are on the top here okay I think those are those are the two pairs we're looking at the question is should you do a Nevsky Joan or should you do a Nevsky William right that's the real question here we know Nevsky is the best cap commander right now one of the best commanders in the entire game for that matter for me I have a feeling that Nevsky Joan is going to perform better than Nevsky William that is just in general for big open field murder balls I think that the additional procs of the skills on Joan are going to compensate for the fact that William has more attack points and that he has that bonus defense as well. This is especially going to be true if you have not expertise William. If you have him at 5551, I think an expertise Joan is going to outperform in the open field with the Nevsky pairing. Now, we have to see is Joan pairing better or is is Nevsky pairing better? I really have no idea. Um I think that the overlapping of the timing for Jones fourth skill if she's secondary is definitely unfortunate you're missing out on one second of buff and rage but realistically the skill tree on Nevsky is very very good you gain extra damage to your to your uh active skills and if you're going to be popping active skills so frequently that's going to be very very solid now of course you gain more rage from the support tree uh and you have better timing on the buffs here but we'll just have to test to see either way I think whichever one is primary I think it's gonna be very very solid no matter what but then the question becomes you know do you bring Saladin and William to the open field right uh, and I think the answer is yes I think right now having two uh cavalry pairs in the game right now is very very good I think the Cavs are in the best open field position they've ever been in right now with these top two pairs if you have Attila Takeda that's a bonus that's basically free kill but here's the problem that I have with Nevsky Joan and why I might not actually run this pair despite this probably being the best open field cavalry pair in the game right now the reason for that is because Nevsky and Joan are going to be so good that it's going to be targeted right and I know that I, I feel like I say that a lot especially when we talk about you know Guan Yu he's going to be targeted Boudicca she's going to be targeted Isong A going to be targeted I, I, we always talk about that right and at what point do we say okay everything's a target which means nothing's a target of course that's the case but what I want to understand here is that you know because Joan and William are so similar in a lot of what they do and I think that again at the end of the day Joan is probably the best play with Nevsky but if you're going to bring two marches to the open field and you have the salad and William already you probably want to split them up you probably do because again at the end of the day these are still very similar commanders they're similar commanders I think Jones a little bit better uh we'll have to wait and see on the testing there but because they're so similar uh with Joan being uh, maybe a little bit better you probably want to save your Joan and put her behind a tanky commander like Saladin now is that to say that Saladin is more tanky than Nevsky I mean Nevsky has more stats but you know at the end of the day I think Saladin is generally seen as more tanky whether that's true or not I I can't say for sure but in general you know I think 
I think he probably is right with the support tree so oh he also has buckler shield on the in the conquering tree yeah Saladin I think is probably a, a bit more tanky at the end of the day I also think that if you see a Nevsky in the open field and a Saladin in the open field you're probably going to go for the Nevsky first because he is a more prime target uh he is just a bigger threat right so realistically I think your Saladin will be less targeted so you would want the secondary to your Saladin to be the more valuable secondary does that make sense and the reason for that again is because Joan is giving rage to your nearby allies which so is William but she's also giving that five percent all damage buff which is going to extend to your to your Nevsky even if they're not in the same March as long as they're nearby each other there's a high chance that 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 your Nevsky will get it now if you're running five March in the open field then you know I actually don't know how the game calculates which other two are going to get it maybe it's proximity I have no idea but realistically if you have this if you already have right when Joan comes out if you have Saladin William and Nevsky you probably will want to do this pairing right here and I'm just going to move Attila to Kate out of the way so we're not getting confused I think this is probably the play um but if you're only building one Cavalry March and you don't already have Saladin William this is probably the play right here this is what I assume will probably be the best performing Cavalry open field March that's my assumption again this is based on looking at the skills and understanding how these mechanics are going to work we have to wait and see for the testing but at the end of the day there's advantages to William there's advantages to Joan one of the biggest advantages of William is that a lot of players already have him and he costs way less sculptures at 5551 five, right it's just he's such a good value I think so many people already have him for that reason so at that point it's like do you go for the Joan if you already have this pairing right let's say you don't even have Saladin let's say he's not someone you have do you go for the Joan if you already have this pairing that is going to be up to you um are you a Cavalry main definitely consider it if you are not a Cavalry main you might actually want to skip Joan and I know that might be controversial but right now we just saw Lilith skip the leadership cycle will that mean that the next cycle is going to be leadership and then we'll resume the normal cycle after I don't know are we going to go right into a an infantry uh cycle after this right like after cavalry usually comes infantry so are we going to see in three months from now a new infantry set are they going to be game breaking like we don't know what the next set of commanders is going to be but if you already have an expertise Nevsky with William and you're free to play like you might want to save the 690 sculptures for from Joan and see what the next uh infantry set is if again you're not a cavalry main player that's just my recommendation also you know do you have two sets of good cab gear that's another like huge question you have to ask yourself and do you want to run two calves in the open field right now or do you want to do three infantry and you know one archer one calf again if we're talking free to play you're probably not running up five uh, open field anyway so you know if you're running two or, or three or four do you want two of them to be cavalry right probably not but we're just gonna have to wait and see uh how these you know commanders play out when they come into the game how big of a of a meta shift will Joan bring I think probably relatively minor even though I do think she will probably be part of the best open field cavalry uh March that you that you could make I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say in the comments section below are you planning on investing in Joan or do you think she's a little bit underwhelming and you're just going to keep using your budget build for William with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it takes one second and it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video we're so close to 40,000, which is actually mind-blowing so please go ahead and click that button some of you may think you're subscribed and you used to be subscribed and then YouTube unsubscribed you so go ahead and check there as well with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this has been on I will talk to you guys again soon peace